Good afternoon class, my name is Kimberly Hill and today I'll be presenting about the rise of cybercrime and how to protect against personal financial exposure. Cybercrime is generally defined as a criminal offence involving a computer as the object of the crime or as the tool used to commit a material component of the offence. With a wide variety of ways to be affected by cybercrime, there are several targets of the offence. These targets include small and large businesses and their customers. Looking at the banking and payment industries in specific, hackers usually target the computers of banks, the bank's clients, and the payment networks, payment service providers, and merchants. The reason why hackers target these devices in specific is because they can easily obtain personal information with a small amount of risk. When most people think of cybercrime, the term hacking comes to mind. Today, most people think of a hacker as a person who, with their technical knowledge, uses bugs or exploits to break into computer systems. Going back in time to the 1960s, the term hacking was used to describe the activities of MIT model train enthusiasts who modified the operation of their model trains. Basically, they discovered ways to change certain functions without re-engineering the entire device. Since then, the term hacking has developed a negative association from the target on computerized phone systems that appeared in the early 1970s. Over the years, hacking has become more and more popular, with the number of yearly incidents spiking over the last few years. Between 2014 and 2015, the number of reported information security inc incidents across the world rose 48%, totaling $42.8 million, the equivalent of 117,000 attacks per day. The seven types of cybercrime activities include hacking, phishing, computer viruses, identity theft, IT sabotage, fraud, and theft of IP. The most common two being phishing and, and computer viruses. Phishing is used for personal attacks by gathering info on banking systems, sending emails out pretending to be the bank, and requesting info to get the customer profile information. Computer viruses, on the other hand, are a type of attack on individuals through the use of pop-ups and emails that give the hacker the ability to access information saved to the device. With the size and scope of cybercrime today, the list of issues associated with attacks is quite long, unfortunately. Some of these issues include increased costs, theft of intellectual property, decreased innovation because of the reduced rate of return from, for investors and innovators, financial losses from hacked bank accounts and identity theft. Governments need to begin serious, systematic effort to collect and publish data on cybercrime to help countries and companies make better choices about risk and policy. The ACCA outlines the number of incidents involving skimming devices which rip off consumers at gas pumps and ATMs is growing largely. With the growing popularity of their use to gather customer data, the number of people being scammed is largely increasing alongside it. With that being said, it's important to consider who is liable for these damages. As we know, doing business with large corporations is becoming more and more risky as new types of hacking techniques are developing. With the increased dependence on technology nowadays, almost all information collected by businesses is stored on some type of computer. This brings the question of who should you trust with your personal information into light. The act of buying something from a business is technically known as entering a contract where both parties are responsible for holding up their side of the deal. With that in mind, it would make sense to say that both parties assume any risks associated with the business transaction. Due to the size and scope, corporate finance transactions are another prime target for cyber criminals. The sizable amount of data involved in these trans transactions make the payout for the risk much higher. It's also important to remember that as large corporations expand on a global scale, more investments are generally needed. These investors may also be hacked for financial information, and for this reason, it's critical for organizations and business partners to all be on the same page with preventative systems. Prevention is a key aspect in avoiding cybercrime and can be the difference between an organization going out of business or growing on a global scale. All of these measures, including education, training, securing digital assets, evaluating risks, ensuring the right security is in place, password protection, audit trails, and insurance are important in the prevention of cybercrime attacks, but one in specific that should be highlighted is insurance. Cyber liability insurance is a type of insurance available to both small and large businesses 
that covers the cost of restoring loss to business income or reputation. Using this type of insurance policy ensures both the business and the customers involved will be able to recover any losses they experience. Businesses should also have a system that provides immediate notification of cyber breach, breach and should promptly notify its customers of the breach and possible suspicious activity. By using this system, businesses can be sure to lessen the impact on finances and reputation, as well as the impact on customer well-being. If these steps are not taken, cyber criminals have the opportunity to go more in-depth with their scam, resulting in increased damages. It's critical for organizations whose customer information has been compromised in a breach to send out notifications as soon as they know what happened and who was affected. Cybercrime activity is currently at an all-time high. Current activity includes data leakage from survey sites, cyberstalking, corporate finance data leakage, malware attacks, and more. A report from CTV mentioned that over a one-year period, 69% of Canadian businesses said they had experienced some type of cyber attack, ranging from malware and computer viruses to phishing and social engineering attacks. With the increasing visibility of cybercrime, many inv individuals and businesses are taking the necessary precautionary steps, but unfortunately, cybercrime probably won't disappear anytime soon, but this doesn't mean that we shouldn't keep trying to fight it. The major issue with ongoing cybercrime is the new innovative techniques to obtain personal information that are being developed over time. These new hacking techniques make monitoring and tracing cyber attacks even more difficult. One way to deter a socially undesirable behavior is to criminalize it. With that being said, in the future it will be really interesting to see whether or not new efforts to track and put away these offenders will be developed and implemented. The problem lies in the fact that it's often difficult to identify and trace cyber criminals, assess the extent and impact of their offenses, and collect and analyze actual digital evidence. Sadly, the ongoing innovation I mentioned before isn't making this any easier. Cybercrime is an ongoing issue that has been affecting individuals and businesses across the world for over 40 years. The financial losses associated with these attacks are quite substantial, totaling $55 billion in Canada in 2010 and more than $400 billion across the world in 2013. Returning to the question who should be held accountable, it's important to remember that there are risks associated with doing business with any type of organization. Many business transactions involve personal information of some sort, whether it's a credit card or a mailing address, and with that being said, as long as businesses ensure they are taking all the precautionary steps and have insurance, there's really no one to be held accountable. Looking at the future, it's unlikely that the level of activity will decrease anytime soon. New systems are being developed to monitor and trace cybercrime activity and provincial and national governments need to start investing more funds into these programs. The economic impact of decreasing this activity would be quite substantial. For example, taking the estimated $55 billion that was lost due to cyber attacks in Canada in 2010, the Canadian government would have been able to fund numerous projects that would have driven economic growth. By decreasing the level of cybercrime activity within the country, new businesses looking at entering the market would also see it as more attractive with less risk. The high level of cybercrime is not only having negative effects on personal and business finances, but also on the financial well-being of our country. McPhee mentions that the most important cause of cybercrime comes from its damage to company performance and national economies. Cybercrime damages trade, competitiveness, innovation, and global economic growth. With that in mind, it's important for our future economy's well-being that we do something to stop the ongoing cybercrime attacks within our country and across the globe.